Yeah, great. Okay. Um, I'm actually in Wikipedia, which will be in uh, the whole time. I decided to go through vowels first because they're easier and then uh, consonants after that. I'm just going to kind of breeze through most of the kinds of sounds that you can make. Uh, there's some, especially in the back of the mouth and the throat that I can't make yet, <laughs> which is why I haven't tried learning Arabic yet. Um, because uh, several sounds are back there, and there's uh, other sounds I don't that I not, I don't feel good enough yet to even try, like uh, yep. in Welsh and so forth. But um, anyway, so um, there's the what they call the Latin vowels a e u e o, um, and uh, the IPA, which um, you'll see here in the chart, uh, uses those letters i e a e i o u. Um, so, um, but then as we progress onto um, other sounds, then uh, it, they make up different um, different letters for those sounds. But um, we're going to be less concerned about the, the sounds uh, than in the chart that they're in. So uh, if you see in the left side, it, has, it says close or close, mid, close, mid and open. And um, that refers to um, how wide open your mouth is. And usually your tongue will, will go down as your mouth gets wider. So um, you're, you're your uh, lips are almost closed when you pronounce E, and then they're wider when you pronounce E, and then they're really wide when you pronounce A. So E, E, A. If you go that, you do that a few times, you can see. Um, yeah. Likewise, in the it sounds U, O, A, also goes from uh, almost closed to open, U, O, A. And so that's what this is on the left side. And then you have um, where, the, okay, uh, the tongue, um, which part of the mouth, I guess, the tongue is occupying, the front of the tongue, um, the front of the mouth, the center part, or the back. Um, so E and E are, uh, your tongue will be near the front. A, uh, it's in the middle of the mouth. Same with sh the schwa sound, uh, and then an I, and sounds like that. And then in the back, you have U and O. Of course, Spanish only has these five. Now there's a, um, there's a chart on the right. Um, yep. I don't know if you can see that too. Yep. Okay, and um, that's saying the same thing, but in a more of a diagram form. So I don't know why it's wider at the top than the bottom. I'm sure it was explained to me when I took a fun, uh, fun, uh, linguistics class, uh, phonetics class, but um, that was a long time ago. Um, I thought maybe the mouth um, gets wider towards the top, but actually I think it maybe it's just that um, the sounds, um, you can make a, a wider range of sounds and still hear the difference between them uh, for these uh, close, Sound, close sounds and the open ones. I don't okay. know which, um, but anyway, uh, you'll you'll find out someday when you do take a uh, when you do read up on phonetics. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so you got the same thing: e, e, and then a at the bottom, o and u, um, and you got the the close, mid, open, and you have the front, central, back. Now, um, it's really easy with Spanish because it only has the five. It's more complicated with English. So those are just two diagrammatic representations of essentially Oops, wrong language. Um, how, 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 how open your mouth is, which is often, often coincides with your tongue moving down. Yes. That's and right. then the, the, the other one was exactly where in the mouth the tongue is placed. That's right. That's right. all it is for those. From front to and, back. Yeah. And most vowels are somewhere in those two ranges. So um, with practice, you can pronounce most vowels that way. But there's, there are other um, features of vowels that, um, that, of course, Spanish doesn't have to worry about. Um, and so I'm going to, uh, first, I'm taking you to uh, uh, modern standard Arabic <laughs> um, we have here. Uh, uh, there's the chart on the right is like the last one we had. You see, there's only three vowels, e, a, and u. Um, the um, dialects, like in Egypt and so forth, also have a and o, but um, in the modern standard, it only has the three, which is not very many. So, as you can imagine, because I know you've done uh, syllable counting before, there's not that many syllables you can make uh, when you have so few vowels. So, they also yeah. have distinguish between short and long vowels. Um, so you have mm. e and you have e and you have u and you have u and you have a and you have a. Um, Japanese does this too. You have a a e e e, e o o u u. Five, uh, so five which doubles to the ten. The English actually only doubles uh, only lengthens vowels to in word stress. Like elevator, the 
the first e eh is pronounced longer. Um, and there's other things too. It's a little higher pitch. It's a little, uh, you know, uh, more force put into your breath when you say it. Elevator, you know, um, for that e eh at the beginning because that's where the word stress is. But we don't actually, um, we don't have, like, you don't have a um, elevator and elevator and elevator as yeah, different meanings because the vowels are different lengths. But you do have that. Too. You do have that with um, with uh, Arabic and uh, Japanese and, and a bunch of other languages where they have short and long vowels. Um, this other chart here uh, is about diphthongs when you have uh, one vowel that glides into another. So ah, ah becomes e, so I, and ah becomes u, uh, is ao, so I, ao are the are the two diphthongs there. Some languages have a lot of diphthongs, some have very few. Um, so they're um, just wanted to mention that briefly. Uh, you'll usually find in in these uh, Wikipedia articles, they'll have a section on uh, exactly which diphthongs or sometimes triphthongs a particular language has. Um, you know about uh, you've been running into a lot of them with uh, uh, Mandarin, with uh, Chinese Mandarin Chinese because there you'll have um, you'll have um, for example um, Mei Guo, which is America, and um, Nay, you have um, the e and you have e, and so the e is long and the e is short, um, and uh, then you have guo, where the the u is short and the o is long, and so you have to know for each each um, with Chinese you have to know with each um, each diphthong which vowel you're supposed to make longer and which one you're supposed to make yep. shorter, um, and uh, but with with most languages it's the e the Ye and the wu are the short part. Um, but that's not always the case. It's usually the case. Um, uh, let's see. Okay, so the next one I wanted to bring up. Um, are you okay so far with all this? Yeah, I think so. That's probably, we'll see. Um, now we'll get into French, which, um, I, yeah. Yeah, this should be a little bit more familiar. Maybe not formally, yeah. but at least I'll have an informal grasp of it. Exactly. Um, so you, you start with the same. Um, some of the same vowels, and of course, there's some extra ones. Um, but um, the main, there's two special features of vowels that French shows. One is uh, the difference between oral vowels on the left and nasal vowels on the right. So oral vowels, as you know, are pronounced only through the mouth, and nasal vowels, you pronounce, uh, you the air goes through the mouth and the nose at the same time. So you have, um, you'll have, uh, for example, uh, eh on the left, which looks like the backwards letter number three. And then you'll have uh, the nasal version e eh, um, on the uh, which you show in the right there, and you have a ah, and you have aw, ah, and so forth and so on. Um, and I always get confused because um, when I, I learned French before I learned phonetics, so I was trying to use the English. So there was there's one that sounds like a ah, to me, but nasal a, eh. but I think <laughs> it's it's not a, eh, it's probably a, eh. and so I've been pronouncing it wrong all these years, but I'll eventually. Get it down. Eventually, get a um, hand the, on it. Yeah, the because um, they don't have an in that language or most languages. Um, the other feature is rounded versus unrounded, uh, and you show that you see that in the left here, uh, where it says front. Um, you have unrounded e, 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 and a. Ah. Now, when you have, you might see in the parentheses, there's the e, which is like, like I said, like backwards three. Um, with um, with actually a, a Greek letter E epsilon I guess, but with the um, colon after it, the two dots. The colon actually means it's a long vowel in IPA. Um, so you have e and e, but e in parentheses means it's usually in loan words or special situations only. Um, anyway, those are the unrounded. So your your lips actually are stretched out, left to right, you know, uh, horizontally. E e e a. Um, but the, there's also the rounded versions where you actually purse your lips like you're pronouncing oo or o. So e rounded becomes u, uh, which is the letter u. Um, and the uh, e rounded is u, um, or something close to that. I'm not sure I get it right. <laughs> the e becomes u, uh, like, like a l, um, l e, um, and, uh, and so forth. So, you, well, they only have those three in French, but. Um, you'll see those a lot in, in Scandinavian languages. Um, well, they'll put a U with two dots over it. And uh, mm. what you're actually doing is you're taking the U from the back of your mouth and you're pushing it to the front of your mouth, uh, but keeping it rounded. 
So oo becomes e. Mm. Oo. 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 So what if I think we got to e, you pronounce it the same way, which is the same value you have in French, uh, shown by the letter y. So anyway, um, so you have, these are the features of vowels. You have um, front, central, back, which is where your tongue is. You have close, mid, open, which is how open your mouth is. You have nasal, which is whether you use the, the, uh, the, your nose or oral where you don't. Um, actually, nasal, you use both. Or you have uh, rounded versus unrounded. Um, like in Korean, they have a uh, rounded oo and an unrounded oo. And you have to, uh, they're, they're totally different vowels that make totally different words. Uh, and in Japanese, I've been mispronouncing it all these years because I've been pronouncing oo um, like, um, oh, I can't think of a word right now, but anything with the letter U in it, um, uh, uh, Chigai Masu, <laughs> it's actually oo, it not, it's the unrounded mm. version. Chigai Masu, although the U is usually silent there. But um, so those are the features of vowels. Um, and um, so, Knowing so, just those features, you can probably imitate any language so with the vowels. The kind of the, the fundamental framework in the IPA, the way they deal with vowels is first with what we originally looked at. It was quite simple, just a simple kind of matrix where yes. it referred to what we can see on the top, which is front, central, back, where your tongue is placed, and then kind of close, middle, open, which refers to how how open your mouth is when pronouncing the vowel. Yes. But then there are kind of sub dimensions which vary as well, which yeah. is kind of roundness, unrounded and rounded. Yes. And then also you can distinguish vowels into two separate groups, oral and nasal. That's right. Which, which refers to whether it's just coming through the mouth as a or having both the mouth and the nose involved in the production of the sound. Yeah, exactly. So there's okay. just but four, four features that we have to deal with with vowels. Um, and um, at least in all the languages that I've encountered so far. With, um, with the, um, on the left in the oral block where it says close mid and open mid, is that just distinguishing, is that just breaking down the kind of middle placement into two it's it's kind of yes. increasing the resolution. There's a there's yeah, slight yeah. exactly okay because uh, we'll come up with uh, the other kind of chart, the one that, that looks kind of like a like a cup. Um, yeah. That that one um, we'll see in some languages uh, just in passing. They'll have like a lot of vowels and there'll be like dots all over the thing. Um, so um, you can so, get really granular. So this chart is represents the sounds as being rather discrete, whereas the other chart which is more cup like kind of represents the continuum yeah that's and, right and place them on that as accurately as yeah. possible i suppose that's right and even the letter the the ah sound um like in father um that could be anywhere at the bottom of the mouth like uh, here in french it's actually uh towards the front but in english it's i think in the back and in german i think it's uh in the central area um and some languages it's a little it's not quite open its little open mid like where a is but but in the middle of the mouth and so it could be that sound could be anywhere around and they actually use they write the letter a differently like here you have it uh under front open there you have uh looks like the typed letter a that, that yep. goes down and over and then they have the other kind um like this for um uh for showing in the back and I think there's a there might be an upside down version for it's in the middle, and so it gets a little bit confusing there, because um, the, um, the they only have so many letters to work with, and um, yep. even if they turn them upside down and all this stuff, so uh, you put dots under them or whatever, so it um, it limits just how precise they can be, while that cup shaped chart can get you really precise. All right, that's really all there is to know with vowels, at least in all the languages I've learned so far, or I've, I've tried uh, dabbling in or whatever. Um, now we'll go to consonants. There's a lot more to that. So um, <laughs> I saw, thought I'd start with um, with um, uh, modern Greek. Um, you'll see the Greek letters there. Um, and then in the slashes, you'll have the uh, IPA. Um, so um, here, um, it's the top is very similar to the vowels where it's what part of the mouth your tongue is, the tip of your tongue is in. Um, or it may not be your tongue in the case of the labial, uh, 
um, but basically it's, it involves the top of your mouth, uh, what part of the top of your mouth is involved. And then down the left is actually just, uh, instead of being up and down, it's, that's just uh, different types of sounds you could be making. Um, so we'll start with the, um, uh, we'll start with the top first. Um, labial just means it has to do with your lips, one or both lips. So the M, mm, is your two lips touching each other, mm. And then with the B or B, then um, they're touching each other briefly, B and B, and they're letting a puff of air, well, not really a puff of air necessarily, maybe a tiny bit of air uh, out. Um, well, mm, you're just letting all the sound go through your skin, basically. Um, so, um, but they're all with your, t uh, both of your lips. And then you have F and V, the F and V, that involves your, 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 uh, your, your bottom, actually it's your bottom uh, lip and your top teeth. Mm -hmm. and touching each other and that you blow the air through your teeth and that makes the or the sound. Um, the difference between voice, voiceless and voiced is whether your vocal cords are involved too. Your vocal cords aren't vibrating when they are vibrating. So you put your, yep. I can feel that. Or you can even tell uh, just for your uh, whole face feeling a little bit of vibration. Um, now dental um, means that it involves your teeth, uh, as you probably can tell. Um, so we have the sounds th and th, as in the word, uh, uh, the word the, T-H-G is the, looks like a D with a slash through it. Th, that's the voiced one. And th, as in um, thimble, and that's the unvoiced one, but they're both spelled with T-H in English. Um, and that's the, uh, well, the symbol you probably recognize from Greek. Um, from math class or something. Yeah. And then um, the uh, alveolar, uh, okay, before we move on, I should actually, um, from here on, we're actually involved with the roof of the mouth. So um, if you take your tongue and you start at the teeth and you move your tongue back along your mouth and just feeling the top of your mouth, you could see there's, um, there's a ridge, it's kind of upside down, but you have a, a ridge and then it drops off real quick. And then you have a soft area, well you have a, a dome, uh, that's the top of your mouth. And the dome, the fr front part of your dome is kind of hard, uh, but the back part of the mouth of the dome is softer and it almost tickles when you move your mouth on it. Um, Got me feeling so, the inside of my mouth. <laughs> yeah, and, um, and actually um, when you're practicing a lot of these sounds, what you'll end up doing is, is saying a word in the language you're learning and then just saying the sound from the word and then freezing your tongue Maybe you have to try it several times before you can succeed in freezing your tongue in that position. And then you open your mouth a bit and put your finger in and see exactly where the tongue is. And that helps you to, uh, to understand uh, the sound. So when you then uh, encounter it, when you're trying to learn a new sound, you'll have some idea of where your tongue's going. Um, but anyway, so, so uh, dental means your, your tongue is actually touching the, uh, not dental, um, well actually there are dental sounds. Uh, like in Spanish, let me go back to Spanish. Uh, down to consonants. Where do we have consonants? Okay, they have dental sounds. Um, so you have the p and the f and the m and the b. Um, and then you have uh, these dental sounds, you have the, the, the um, t and the d. Um, we pronounce them with our tongue, uh, the tip of our tongue, touching the alveolar ridge, the ridge I talked to you about, somewhere along that ridge, it could be anywhere in that ridge, and it'll still sound pretty much the same, um, but uh, it's kind of the middle is where we, we put it in English. But in, in Spanish, they actually put the tongue right against the, the back of the teeth. So uh, maybe the, the corner, so t and d, so um, uh, is where it's actually pronounced if you want to sound like a Spaniard, t and d, not t and d like in English, but t and d. Yeah. Um, so going back then to what language was I on? Uh, Greek. Um, uh, in Greek though, they're alveolar just as in English. You have the t and the d not against the back of the teeth. Um, and then you say n, t, and d. And then um, those are called um, plosives or stops where you're actually, while you're touching your tongue against the top of your mouth, you're also holding your breath for just a moment. Um, then you have the fricatives where um, you're, 
you still let some air through and there's still a little bit of a gap between the top of your tongue and the top of your mouth, the tip of your tongue and the top of your mouth. So they have s and z, the difference between voiced and unvoiced, but uh, your, your tongue is still going up to the same area, but not quite touching, s and z. And then- So, um, so just to clarify, for alveolar, yeah. your tongue placement is such that it's touching the the part of the roof of your mouth before it kind of flattens out and plateaus out. It's yeah, that exactly. kind of ridge in between the teeth and that flat top part. Okay. That's right. Um, so it's, it's, it's before you get to a kind of an upside down cliff. Um, so it's, um, yeah, just the area just behind the teeth basically, but not the teeth, not touching okay. the teeth. Um, you'll sometimes see in some languages, it'll say dental slash alveolar, meaning you could pronounce it either way. Uh, and maybe it depends on the dialect. Um, whether they pronounce it one way or the other, or where linguists aren't quite sure. <laughs> Sometimes they, they don't quite agree with each other on things, um, but usually um, it, it's one, being one or the other, depending on the language. And even if you get it wrong, you'll be understood because I have never encountered a language which have both, like for example, the t against the teeth and the t that isn't, um, because they sound so similar that you wouldn't be able to distinguish with two different words. Um, but um, but just to sound as as accurate as possible, I guess um, you'd want to learn it correctly there. And I guess with um, sometimes when you have a, a different sound that's similar, but in, for the back of the mouth, you can if if they'll have the first one being dental, so that uh, right behind the teeth, so it's easier to distinguish the two versions of that sound. Um, I've heard Arabic's like that way, and I believe Chinese is that way too, but I'm not much sure. Um, uh, so. Now, um, there's the tap, the letter R, the rhotic sound, like I sent you an article on, um, and that's uh, the, um, in the. In American English, we say butter, B-U-T-T-E-R, and we use that sound. So it was very easy for me to pick up, but I know in, in other countries it's pronounced butter. And um, In Australia, we say butter. <laughs> yeah, so you've got it too. Um, and then there's the lateral ul. Um, we are, now, for that, what you're actually doing is you're touching the top of your mouth. You're letting the air through. You're not stopping it. But the sound is actually going through the sides of the tongue. Oh, um, not through the middle. And um, there was, I think with the, um, the, the uh, trilled R, um, you, that, that does the same thing as well. You, um, and unlike what some uh, YouTube videos are describing, you're actually, um, you're vibrating the tongue but you're also like the sound through the side of the tongue they're not your tongue is not quite flat it's kind of curved on the sides um, so that one uh, just something you can think about later <laughs> I'm not gonna go into that now anyway so that's alveolar then you have um, valor now there's actually a category in between these I won't get to yet I'll do that with the next language but valor is your tongue um, the towards the back of your tongue not quite the back is Blocking is as, as you're going up to the top of the back of the mouth. And uh, that's where you get k and g. Um, and then uh, some languages also have k, like Spanish, um, Jose, um, J O S E. Um, that's, uh, that's often represented with an X in many languages and with uh, the IPA. And then you have a sound we don't have in English, g, which is the k, but it's, it's vo voiced. It's a voice, huh. so huh, mm. huh. and uh, Greek has it here. The letter G is uh, usually pronounced that way, um, but you, you'll also encounter that with other languages as you go along. Um, so uh, any questions so far with the consonants? Maybe not so much a question, but maybe I should just kind of try to summarize and you can point out if yes. there's something I haven't I noticed you do that a lot, so go ahead. Yeah. Um, so again, we have we have what at first seems to be quite a simple matrix where the, the columns represents the placement of the tongue within your mouth. Yes. Essentially moving from front to back. Exactly. Um, or, uh, not necessarily exactly the tongue, but where, where in the mouth the sound is could be described as coming from, for example, yeah. the lips to begin with, teeth, then that ridge just before the kind of flattening out, 
and then towards the back of the mouth with Valar. But yes. also, it, I suppose the other thing which I kind of intuited from that discussion is that you might have different parts of the tongue itself which are touching those various areas of the mouth. That's so, right. so that might be an extra kind of distinction or once you go more high resolution, you might be able to discuss that or if yeah. there's any significance. And yeah, then, and, I, and we're going to go in, in, into that a little bit with the next languages. Yes. Okay. And then with the, the rows, um, we're now talking about the kind of type of sound, nasal, I suppose, whether it involves the nose, plosive, whether yes. it involves stopping, sound, stopping air and then kind of quickly releasing it, fricative being kind of more vibration, voiceless and voice. Well, it's fricative, yeah. Fricative is where you, um, yeah, you're letting the sound Steady through flow. the gap. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's a, that's a good thing to have picked up on actually. So it's, it's, it's yeah. not necessarily vibration, but it's more of a forcing the air through a kind narrow of thin, gap. narrow gap and then yeah, voiceless right. and voiced referring to whether the vocal cords are involved. Exactly. Tap and lateral, I probably can't. Um, yeah, tap. Can't you're you're just tap. You're tapping your tongue real fast. Gonna go, uh, um, You know, so um, like a um, let's see, a Spanish word with uh, with an R that's not in the front of the word. Um, um, uh, well, I can't think of a word right offhand, but um, how would you distinguish it from like plosive? Pedal, like P E R O. A plosive. Oh, what is that again? How would you, what's the distinction between tap and plosive? Because yeah, here it's um, yeah, it I'm not sure. I th um, it may be that that yeah, I'm not really sure. I mean, that's a good question. <laughs> but one of the nice things is with um, and I was going to show you also how to do your own research on Wikipedia. Um, you can hover your mouse over any of these, and it will. Re tell you briefly what it means it, kind of big language because it's like a mm. it's like an encyclopedia so but you can see here what it says for tap um uh, it's not saying anything here but you can also click on it and read a whole article about it yeah and then uh with the plosive um the vocal tract is blocked so all airflow ceases so maybe in the tap maybe not all airflow ceases but you're still touching your tongue to the top of your mouth Okay. Unlike the fricative where you're, you're letting air throw, go through a little gap. Um, lateral, like I say, is where the tongue is curved a little bit to let air through the sides. Okay. Uh, lateral, that makes sense. <laughs> they, yeah. they have named things in a, somewhat, in a, in a way with some sense. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, okay, so this was Greek. See, I, I told you consonants were harder because I, mm. I take longer with each language here as I introduce more features. English um, has quite a few consonants. Um, so um, starting with the, the uh, let's see, the categories are pretty close to the same, but there's one additional category on the left in the middle are called affricate. Um, you have the fricative, um, like sh, and here in the middle are post alveolar sh and zh, as in um, measure um, and sugar. Um, and those are voiced and non-voiced, of course, versions of the same thing. But the affricate, you put the T sound or the D sound in front of it. So um, charm versus, you know, you have sugar, which is this shows a little S curve thing, like a snake shape. There's a sh as in sugar. And then you have charm, you're putting a T sound in front of the S -S -S -C -H sound. So we write it with a CH in English, like cheese, but um, the uh, uh, and the sh for the other, um, but um, it's just the, all we're doing is adding a t in front of, the, of that sound, um, and um, like in in Chinese they'll take an s and they'll put the t in front of that and it's got t, um, and I think that's the letter, is it the letter c, um, it's, it, and it's the letter z and the letter c I guess, um, t and t. They're putting just a T and an S. So here we have the T and, and SH sounds. And then you have the Z as in measure, and you have judge, um, the, written with a J, 
that's the D with that sound. Um, and then there's the approximate at the bottom, um, which includes the lateral L that we did earlier and has the English er, which is, I have no idea how to explain, but um, I'm sure there's an article here you can click on. You can actually click also on the, on the individual letter um, and go to that page and it'll actually have, um, it'll have a, let's see, it'll, it'll talk a little about what languages it's in and uh, how you make the sound spelled out here. Um, example words from different languages and then on the right side you have um, different, uh, in very large letters, <laughs> shows what the IPA letters are and there's sometimes more than one that have the same sound. Um, and then um, it shows you what codes you can use for your computers and then down below, even, even what the braille is for it. And then down below you have an audio sample. Mm, that's probably the most useful thing actually. Exactly. And that's why I use Wikipedia is, is mostly for that. Um, so that's how I learned the ga, g sound, which is like the Jose, but vo voiced. I had to practice that that way. Um, that's how I learned it. And um, that's how I learned the sounds I didn't know for Vietnamese. Um, so anyway, um, so approximate, I guess means your, your, your tongue is near a certain location, but not exactly there is technically what that word, what the word approximate means. But there's a big variety between these four approximates. Um, yeah, the articulators or the parts of the mouth that are involved, including the tongue, come close to each other, but are narrow, you have a narrow gap. The fricative is the same thing. But anyway, l, r, y, and w. Um, y, we're going to talk about in a moment. That's a very important uh, one for some languages. So um, otherwise, it's pretty much pretty basic. You look at the top part, nasal, m, n, and ng. Um, same parts of the mouth, labial, alveolar, and valar. And you have uh, stops, p, b, t, d, k, and g in the same parts of the mouth. And then under, um, I forget I just told you the ch and the j, as in uh, cheese and judge. And then you have the fricatives, which are uh, pretty basic too. F, v, th, th, s, z, sh, j. And then um, there's a category called glottal, which actually is back in the mouth, it's, uh, back in the throat itself, h. Um, and then you have the, uh, you have the approximate. Now, the, the one I wanted to bring up with is the, uh, the column called palatal. Um, and that's the, um, that's that, that high part of the mouth in the back. Um, after you, after you fall off the ridge, it's the palatal. So it's the palate. Um, we talk about palates when we're talking about food. Um, but it, it's, um, here it's talking about that, that area. So the, um, the difference here is, um, now, um, I was going to use the analogy of uh, softball and baseball. In softball, um, when you pitch a ball, you go it underhand. You throw your hand up like this. That's how most of these sounds are, where your tongue is actually curved, uh, kind of curved upwards till it touches the top of your mouth. So I, I call those the underhand, underhand uh, uh, <laughs> sounds. And that's almost everything on this chart. But then there's the overhand where you uh, throw like this, and that creates an arch at, your, at the top of your mouth. You hear your tongue is shaped in an arch. So it, uh, it curves up and down. Um, and that's where the y, as in word yes, it's spelled with a J here. Um, uh, uh, the palatal approximate y. So yeah. Um, yeah, if you practice y, um, and then freeze your mouth, and you actually move your finger around, you'll which I, I did recently because I didn't realize how the, these palatal sounds work. Your, um, your arch, your tongue, and it's, it's um, actually touching the alveolar uh, ridge or actually very close to it. That's where the, the gap of the air is going just between the, oh. the, the ridge, the tip of the ridge the, uh, where it drops off and the back of the mouth. Oh, I mean, yeah, yeah. So um, uh, this can be very important when we get to uh, some languages like Russian. Um, so that's the palatal sounds. Um, your here, your your tongue instead of going up, it's going uh, uh, arching down. So um, now, uh, Russian's where it becomes really important. 
they have the um, soft consonants and the hard consonants. Yeah, I was um, reading about this last night, I think. Yeah. <laughs> and so um, here they broke the, they the same chart and they break it into um, each column into um, plain and palatal or uh, palatized, I guess is the way they describe the Russian, but palatal, palatized, pretty much the same thing. Um, remember how the, the uh, approximate y is pronounced, is written with a J, just as it is in German. Hold yeah. on, one sec. <laughs> yes. Sorry, I'm back. Okay. So um, you have the plain, like the m, and you have the pal palatized n. Um, what it's showing with a, a small j for that here um, to show the y sound. But what you're doing is you're you're pronouncing the m with your tongue in the y position. Mm. So m you have yeah um m yeah. So for the um for m, of course, your tongue isn't touching anything. It's just your tips, your your, your lips touching each other. But for the palatized, you also have your tongue in the y position at the same time. So it sounds like you're pronouncing a, a little y afterwards. But the point is not to pronounce the Y, but to have your tongue in that position. So, mm, um, so ma and mia, um, like that. And the same thing with the N. Now the N here does uh, touch, um, actually it's, it's dental and it touches the back of the, of the teeth. N um, is the plain and then, or the, the hard consonant N. And then the palatized is N. And there you have the N, your tongue is in the Y position. Your tongue is, um, not the tip of your tongue, but somewhere towards the front of your tongue is actually touching that alveolar ridge. Yeah. And then the tip of the tongue is kind of hanging out a little bit. Um, that's good. That always takes practice, but at least uh, I'm explaining it here, which uh, I didn't get a good explanation. I actually took like 12 or 13 lessons with an Italki teacher uh, who had the background in phonetics. And she didn't so much explain it to me as uh, she told me every time I was pronouncing it wrong, <laughs> and I, 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 uh, I imitated her and the recording until I finally figured it out, kind of. But I didn't realize exactly what my tongue was doing until I read up on palatal sounds recently. Um, so the same thing with all these: you've p and p, b and b, f and f, v and v, and then um, the the dental ones p, k, d, j. So the plane is is the underhand and the palatal is the overhand. Um, and it goes through the whole chart this way. So you'll have uh, in the pa now post alveolar, um, your is actually at the ridge itself or just where it drops off. And so um, I uh, like this, um, this one that looks like a C with a curl at the bottom um, is actually um, the S or SH sound with the tongue in the Y position. So um, as in, uh, in Indonesian uses Malaysia, Malaysia, uh, Malaysia or Indonesia. Um, you have that and, it, and some people pronounce it like more like an S, some people pronounce it more like an SH. That's not as important as the, the tongue position being like in the Y position there, palatized. And there's a few others here. I probably know these sounds, but not by the IPA letter, but I can always, you know, you can always click on any of these. Um, if let's say the IPA chart you're on doesn't happen to have where you can click or hover over it, it's not uh, hyperlink. You can always, you know, open up a new page in Wikipedia and you can type what you see at the top in the top in the, the column headings, basically column and row headings. So here you have the, uh, uh, let's say the, uh, Let's go with the uh, post alveolar fricative. And it gives you an article on it. And there's voiced and unvoiced. And um, here's where you can hear it. And then of course explains here with words how to make the sound and gives some examples from different languages. Voiceless. Uh, 
actually, I don't know why they're using different letters because they sound like the same sounds we have in English as in sheep and, uh, and measure. So I don't quite get that, but um, maybe I didn't, I don't know. Um, so that's something that may take time to investigate, but Wikipedia will give you the tools anyway. So that's one way to look something up. If, if in some charts you have these uh, like here where that's, it's not a hyperlink. Yeah. You can, you can just type in those, you know, or you can get a reminder, you know, what is a veiler and all that stuff. So uh, that's Russian. Um, there's a few sounds I didn't go into, like I said, but um, the last one I wanted to show you was Mandarin Chinese. This has always been the most confusing, even though, um, again, I put a lot of emphasis on pronunciation and uh, over the years, I think I finally got it down, but why can't I get to it? Now, some of these you'll go, to, you'll get to ph the phonology section. So you, you pick a language, you type like Mandarin Chinese or Spanish language to search Wikipedia. And then you go down to the table of contents and you click on phonology. You can even pick uh, consonants or vowels. Um, but um, it might have at the top, see also standard Chinese phonology and it'll have an actual article that goes way more into depth. And so if you don't see the charts here uh, that you are used to seeing, you might see it there. Um, now, um, so the initials are what we call the, well, because they have consonants at the end of the, end of the, uh, um, syllable to like, n or n, um, they, they didn't go with, with consonants and vowels, but you, you've probably been learning Chinese this way anyway, initials and, initials and what's the other one? Finals. Finals are usually vowels or files with consonants after it. So initials are just what we think of with consonants here. Um, you have the labial p, and you have the difference between p and p being whether you have a puff of air coming out mm. at the same time. In English, we should do. Um, um, so um, if you take. Skin if you say, and um, kin. Yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, pi and spy. Yeah, and most people don't even realize they do this. Mm. Um, so, um, and then let's see what's new here, though. I don't know why they in English, it. though, it has no meaning associated with it. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> which, is, which is a little bit like, babe, it's just a phonological trap for English language learners. <laughs> yeah, but with um, with um, but but see, the thing is that the the unaspirated one without the puff of air, like in spy um, or skid, um, is closer to the, um, uh, the vo what do you call it? Um, I'm forgetting my terminology here. Vo voiced? Voiced, yeah. It's closer to the voiced sounds. Um, okay. And, and, and so some people, like some, sometimes you might hear something and you say, okay, is that an unvoiced sound or is that, um, I mean, is it unvoiced um, without the puff of air or is that voiced? You know, it's very hard to tell. There's even a, some rare languages that have uh, puff of air and voiced. <laughs> and so, um, uh, I don't know if they're rare or not, but they're rarely studied anyway. Um, so, um, let's see. So, apical, why is it doing that? Um, let's see what that means. I guess I brought this up because I was talking about how you can research, but I've already kind of taught you that. Um, obstructing the air package passage with the lip or the tip of the tongue. Okay, and laminal, which is blade of the tongue, just behind the tip. Okay, so basically typical, apical just means you're using the tip of your tongue to touch the top of your mouth. T, t, n, t, uh, t, like the Z and the C in the, uh, Chinese s and l. Uh, retroflex, though, um, here we have a, a totally new category, mm. and this is where um, your tongue is basically around that drop-off area. It may be right behind it, or it might be just at the tip of it, but it's somewhere in that area. Um, so it's not in the front of the mouth behind the teeth, which is the, um, I'm already forgetting my terminology, which we had in the other languages, and it's not the palate either. It's between those two. That's, uh, and usually, and what it really is talking about is the tongue is curled backwards mm, on itself. I can, I can kind of feel that. So maybe something like, 
<laughs> I'm R. not going to be able to do it. <laughs> Letter R in English. Er, you're doing er, right er. Er. Yeah. Er. Um, it's not straight up and down, and it's not forward, and it's not all that. It's just it's kind of curved back a little bit. Yeah. And so you got the uh, and the ch and the sh and the er in Chinese. Yeah. Uh, I like that. I've heard this. This is something I can't do. Yeah. It's something um, I haven't so been able like to do. Was, I remember my one of my first Chinese classes. I was trying to say the the word. I'll, I'll try, but it's something like Ren. I'm trying to say people. Yeah, I, 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 can't, I, I can't. I can't quite, quite do it right either. So I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm putting the, the English one instead, and it's it's close enough uh, for a beginner. Um, over time, hopefully, we'll, with we'll get a handle game. on it. Less sound yeah. mapping, more. The, um, yeah, you're yeah. still. Um, and and actually, um, you'll see for this where uh, the bottom center here, um, letter R. You see, there's two different um, between the slashes. There's two different letters in the IPA with a squiggly line between. That means that there's a range that the sound can be in, depending on your dialect or which word it's in. Okay. Things like that. Uh, maybe what what vowel follows after it. So um, you have a variant of er, and you have a variant of z, um, and you have it in between those two. So there there is some flexibility involved uh, allowed. Um, and uh, like I say, sometimes it depends on the context, uh, like what vowel comes after it. Sometimes it depends on the dialect. Um, and with, so, with regards to the um, I'll, call, I'll call it the um, the curved line above the two. Uh, oh, that the two yeah symbols. Okay, that's yeah where you're you're running the two sounds together. So, okay, yeah. Um, that yeah, that does um, make sense. It's kind of yeah. transitioning and squishing and. It yeah. makes a yeah. It, it, it actually in um, in Vietnamese they pronounce the N G and the M at the same time, N mm and M mm, and some words N. Mm. Um, and anyway, that's a kind of weird one. Um, so they'll have <laughs> okay. they'll, they'll have that same arch over the M and the N G. Uh, okay. N G being an N with a curl under it. So it's kind of kind of fascinating there. Um, it's uh. In the, uh only certain words like that. Anyway, um, now I was just mentioning the ng sound, ng. Um, you have that on the right side under Valer, the third one down as your nasals. Mm, it's, it's written with an N with a curl at the bottom of it. Um, there's also a, one you'll see occasionally with the, uh, the curl on the other side, on the left side of the letter, and that's the, the ny sound, um, as in the onion. Um, and you have the N with okay. the Squiggly over it in Spanish is in uh, Nina, Nino. Yeah. Um, and that's uh, that's that other uh, letter uh, in the IPA. Um, and I think it's all just going to cover. Now, so you'll see for palatal, you'll see the letter X, so there's J, Q, X. Um, so you have the, uh, uh, what is it, the uh, ch and the ch. Uh, and the sh sounds there, uh, and so that's actually uh, with your tongue in the over, the overhand position or the Y position. So um, that was uh, the J, Q, and X. I was doing wrong for a long time. I thought they were uh, dental, right behind the teeth, while the mm. others I knew were retroflex in the middle of the mouth. So distinguish between the J and the Z H, the Q and the C H the X and the SH especially, I was doing it wrong because I thought, I knew the ones with the two letters, the H, CH, and SH were retroflex in the middle of the mouth. Um, the tongue kind of backwards a little bit. But I didn't know what the J, Q, and X were. Mm. So I assumed they were just in the front of the mouth, but overhand, but actually they're uh, underhand, but they're actually overhand. <laughs> yeah, like yeah. So I still need practice with those, but. But at least, um, yeah, you know, they're pronounced very differently from each other. That's all I was going to cover. Do you have any more questions or anything else you want to you know, review back to me? Yeah, I, I, maybe I just might note a few useful, yeah, useful, useful kind of no, points of notation on this page. So the, the kind of superscript H means it's aspirated it's associated with a puff that's right. of air that's right the yeah. 
the it's kind of it, i think it's kind of like in in music notation like the the curved line although i, I don't know much about music so i might be wrong but the, the kind of the curved line over the two separate symbols represents that they are kind oh. of form a conglomerate they're kind of mixed together yeah. um Good. and then the, one or the other sorry yeah, you, you, they, they kind of glide from one to the other really fast. Okay, okay, glide from one to the other. Okay, and then the the squiggly line represents that there are there's kind of a continuum of sounds which may be dialectal variations, or um, possibly it varies depending on the preceding or the sound after it or some the, the sounds near it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So um, I guess that's it. Um, that's all I wanted to cover. Is there anything you want wanted to look up and have me look up with you? Well, I wouldn't. I language? wouldn't. Wouldn't mind. Um, kind of, maybe discussing uh, phonetics, not so much in the context of linguistics, but a little bit more in the context of language acquisition. Oh, sure. So when when you are when you are approaching a new language, do you do a kind of I'll call it a phonological survey of the, of the language. So you go and you look at the specific, the specific, the specific vowels there are, the specific consonants that they are. And before you try to learn the language, you try to train and drill or prepare yourself to be able to produce those sounds. I'm essentially asking exactly. what's, what's your approach to learning the phonology of the language? Yeah, I'll do, I do, just like I showed you here, I'll, I'll type in, you know, for example, Vietnamese language or uh, Arabic language, and I'll, I'll go to the phonology section and I'll look at the, the vowel charts are usually pretty quick and simple. The con consonants though, um, I, I, I look at the, because I've done it so many times or I've used the IPA so long, I can uh, often, without even looking at the columns and, and rows, uh, headers, I can I can tell just from the letter like you know the M is the same in pretty much every language, um, so I run run across and see if there's any sounds I don't know already from English or another language, and then I focus on those sounds and I'll that's when I look at the the, the column and the row headings, and when I'll um, I'll either if the uh, IPA letter is clickable. I'll go to that page. I'll hear what it sounds like and try to repeat it after it. I'll read the description about it and see, uh, you know, how to pronounce it. And I'll see if I can make that sound. If it's towards the front of the mouth, I can usually figure it out. But if it's like an Arabic towards the back, or if it does some other feature that I've never heard of in language, um, and I don't understand it by the description, then usually I won't learn that language yet. Um, I'll, I'll put it off and hope that I'll understand it someday or that somebody will explain it to me someday. Um, there are very few people that have enough linguistics training to really explain it, but there might be some, there's definitely some native speakers who think they can explain it. And so I can always give them a try, I guess, if I want. But, um, and uh, that's what makes it so difficult with, uh, what I've done sometimes though, uh, after I've been studying the language a while, I'll go onto Italki and I'll, I'll, I'll look at a bunch of different uh, professional teachers and find one that claims they have a background in lingu linguistics or in they have a, like a degree in language teaching, something like that. Uh, and they maybe advertise that they help with phonology or pronunciation. And I'll actually, um, I'll test my pronunciation with them. So actually, if you probably heard it, well, you know, uh, um, uh, what's his name? Um, uh, the language nerd, um, Rod Raju, let's see. Down his first name, I know him really well, but um, uh, not Aaron. But anyway, oh, boy, I uh, forget names he, all the time too. <laughs> yeah, that's what I've known him for a few years now, but I haven't watched his videos lately, so I just blanked out. Um, he um, he was kind enough to help me with my to test my French pronunciation. We spoke for a few minutes or a little while, and then he uh, he told me which sounds I was pronouncing wrong or right. And actually, I had never been able to pronounce the French R for most of my life. Uh, because that, French is my first foreign language, so it's before I learned any of this stuff. Yeah. So um, I just had, uh, you know, descriptions from high school teachers and textbooks and stuff like that, and it doesn't get you very far. So I could never pronounce that R, and I was always ashamed to speak French because I was pronouncing with the English R. Mm -hmm. And um, so I never got enough 
the first few years never got enough speaking practice just because I was too shy to speak because I didn't like the way I sounded when I spoke the language. When a French person from Paris speaks, they sound beautiful to me. I love the way uh, it sounds, the language sounds poetic to me. But when I speak it, it sounds like <laughs> um, But um, uh, uh, um, Hasrin is his name? I think Hasrin, the language nerd. Or, um, he uh, told me, I, actually I was often pronouncing it correctly. So I'm, I'm almost, I'm not getting it where I'm constantly pronouncing correctly, but I, I do have learned the sounds. There's two of them, there's voiced and unvoiced version of, of the French R. Um, and I was actually getting it right a lot of the time. So I was surprised about that. And, and I, anyway, um, with some of these tutors, um, they kind of checked me off. He said, you sound good as you are. Other tutors in other languages, they said, you know, we need to practice this. And, and I booked extra sessions with them and kept going. Uh, it got expensive, but I kept going until, um, until they could kind of sign me off. So yeah. I did a few of them with Chinese and a bunch of them with Russian. Um, and then any tutor I practiced Russian conversation with after that told me my pronunciation was really good. But um, I still struggle with uh, when there's two with Chinese when there's two syllables with different tones, um, or sometimes the same tone twice, I might pronounce the second one wrong. And so I need some practice with some of those tone combinations. Um, where I, I can see on paper how I'm supposed to do it, but when I actually pronounce it, I mess it up somehow. And okay. So um, I actually stopped studying Chinese anyway to give myself time for other languages I prefer yeah. to learn because yeah. I never fell in love with that language. But um, anyway, yeah. So I um, basically before I even start learning a language, I might dabble in a little bit, but I won't seriously try to learn it until I think I can do everything in the chart. So there's several languages like, um, like uh, Hindi, um, has a lot of sounds that I don't know, and I can't figure out from the Wikipedia explanation. Um, and Arabic, like I said, has a bunch of them. Um, Welsh and Irish, also uh, Celtic languages. Um, they have, uh, they often have same consonants, but they'll unvoice con they'll voice and unvoice consonants that we always do one way or the other. They have both versions in the same language. Okay. So it gets it gets really confusing. Like uh, you know, try to imagine the the M, but not voiced, <laughs> it's something like that. You know, it's just, it's just, yeah. Not bizarre. Um, <laughs> yeah. and then they have these, uh, these emphatic ones for Arabic where you have the, the regular S and then you have the emphatic S and the emphatic S also involves the throat in some way where it's restricting the air in some, some way that I don't know, know yet. Yeah. Um, Things but all that's either figured out or have somebody explain. What? Okay. I, I just, I just said things which are quite foreign. Yeah, exactly. But I eventually did figure out um, the uh, the sounds in Vietnamese, and that's why I I almost picked it up, but I decided to do Indonesian first. Um, but the um, the uh, I'm using I have the old Glossika course, and that one um, has the IPA. Um, I think the new one will often have it as well. But um, but I bought a whole bunch of the old ones on sale before they stopped doing it the old way. So it had the PDFs and it had uh, MP3 files to download and you download the whole thing in one package and then it's 3,000 sentences. But the new one is you go on there every day and it gives you some new sentences and you tell how many and it's kind of like Enki in that respect. Um, but, Probably a unique, unique uh, challenge reaching the point where you can uh, work with technical material like the IPA because so many language learners wouldn't be able to so most of the language resources wouldn't accommodate that kind of framework which is a really unique yes. problem to have <laughs> yeah. actually and having um, some technical background which makes it which you can't use yeah and then um there's uh there's even a few cases where um the same ipa letter will represent two different sounds uh and so i even ran into one person who refused to use the ipa for that reason <laughs> um, but um, you need some kind of phonetic um, symbolism, though. Uh, you know, uh, whatever you're going to use. I mean, like the Russian alphabet's designed that way um, to kind of help you out. Oh, is this a hard consonant or soft consonant? That kind of thing. Okay. Or it's palatized or non-palatized, basically. Um, so, yeah. Right. So I, um, I you, you, you must have seen, you saw my video on Swahili where I did the implosive consonants, the b and the the one where you kind of breathe air in rather than out yeah. yes and um so that showed kind of how i practice um these new sounds 
once I start figuring them out. Um, okay. Once once I get comfortable with that, um, then I then I can go ahead and start learning the language. I I like to start with words and work my way up from there because um, when you're like listen to repeat after a sentence, you'll it can be very your mouth's trying to do a whole bunch of things very quickly one after the other. Um, but if you work with individual words, you can kind of focus on different sounds until you get all of them right. And, um, and even the, uh, which syllable to accent and things like that. Yeah. And long and short yeah. vowels. And then work your way up, uh, what I call sentence buildups, words that phrases and back up to the sentences until I can pronounce the sentence pretty close to what I'm hearing on the audio. Then, and then you'll have to get into the other side of pronunciation and intonation and kind of the global pitch and stress and things like that. But that's, that's, right. that's a whole other can so, of worms. Yeah. But so what I'll do is I'll, um, I like to take the PDF version um, and, uh, and kind of build up the sentence, use a sentence build ups there until I could say the whole sentence um, a few times in a row, like a tongue twister, say it correctly a few times in a row. And, um, and after I've done a bunch of sentences, then I'll go to the audio and repeat off the audio. That time, I'll try to be more precise about how to pronounce each sound and also things like intonation and accent. And, um, and try to get as close to the way the speaker does it as I can. And then I'll keep up with the audio version. And I basically put the paper away because I want to train my ear. Uh, the the uh, paper was just there to help me get through the, um, like I say, the, uh, the um, tongue twister aspect um, yeah. to where I can get through the whole sentence, but not where I was trying to necessarily pronounce it all correctly. But then yeah. the audio helps me through the rest, especially with intonation. Okay, well, thank you very much for taking the time to walk me through this. I, I appreciate it a lot. So it's been, it's been very informative. And um, I'll, if this recording works out well, and it's actually saved, which I hope it will, then I can put it up on YouTube and maybe other people can benefit from it too. I'll, this is something I'm definitely going to research more and also try to implement a lot in my own study of languages. I, this is probably the area of language which interests me the most, kind of phonology yeah. and phonetics. So I, I, and I definitely do want to run a few experiments on myself and see kind of where I can take my accent to and that kind of thing. So this has been very, yeah. very useful for me. Thank you very much. Okay, great. Yeah. Great. So I'll, um, so I'll, good luck with all your languages. Yeah, I'll stop the recording.